which is what we are going to talk about now. The Lions. Eric, I was hot Thursday. And then I came to my senses. But I was hot. I was not happy Thursday. Yeah. With the way that game went down. A three-point loss to the Buffalo Bills in a very winnable game. Yep. Tages, you're gonna stick around the whole show, man. I'm not even yeah, taking you. We're just you're <laughs> hanging out with us tonight. We're all with us. I'm gonna be honest. I felt pretty good after. I, at first, I'm obviously you know ruined my Thanksgiving for like an hour, but then I took that step. You know, I felt pretty good about it actually. I think I know we're all against this moral victories. Don't even say it. Do not that. Not, but, not here. Not us. Look, look, <laughs> not I here for that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying that. Okay. But look, the Bills did not play bad. I, I don't think anyone can argue that. The Lions played up to that level. And look, it's the NFL. Those small differences, they make a difference. But the fact that we, you know, we're in, it's not like the Green Bay game where Aaron Rodgers played like Joey Harrington, right? They were in this, they were put playing some good defense. Um, you know, there's a couple plays, you know, a couple co- coaching decisions, but I mean, we're it, the fact that you know, in year two of a complete rebuild, you know, um, that we're in there, we're fighting, um, we showed, we're showing growth. Our young players are doing this, which I think is the most important thing for the season. Huge. Is our young? I I don't care if we if we. I'd rather lose with our young players leading us than win with our vets starring. For sure, I think that is much more sustainable. So, so I want to I, I want to know yeah. what Ricky means by get DJ Chark out of here, and I hope that it's not about that third and one com- incompletion. I hope it's not about that because it, it, look, it, if, it, if JJ McCarthy threw that, that's a touchdown. Well, <laughs> JJ JJ Brady would have put it on the. You buddy. know what? I'm going to be honest with you. If JJ did throw that, it probably would have been a touchdown because that was the worst toss I have ever. That was so bad. And oh. everybody wants to rip on the play call. Do you have a okay, problem with the third down? Do you have a problem, Eric, with the third and one play call like that? Yeah, I do. But I'm more upset about golf. It's like 75-25. I didn't like the okay. play call because you don't lean on the guy who's been doing a Houdini disappearing act for the entire season. He'll hit yeah. a couple catches, then you don't see him for three quarters. Like even, yeah, even I don't when like that, that guy has two steps on his defender. Yeah, because I my because based on what we've seen, he probably would have dropped it. So okay. yeah, don't even look hey, his way. Got a problem with that call? Yep. I love the call. Okay, good. I think cuz look, you can say you can take the deep shot on first down if they if you know, let's say they run it with Jamal, he gets it. They're going to be playing a cover 2. They're going you know, they're going to have guys over top. This is your chance. Go out there, be aggressive. It worked. He's open. Yeah. That's that's just the difference between Goff and a winning quarterback. And yeah, we saw so- that with the with the Josh Allen throw later. And, and I, I think that that is – number one, that was one of the reasons why I was just, like, hot. I was like, why are you throwing the ball there? Like, I didn't I didn't like it. And then I went back and, like, looked at it again. I'm, like, looking at the coverage. I'm looking at what it was. I'm looking at the game situation, right? The Lions, statistically, for as great as their offensive line is, they're not very good on short yardage plays. They're not very good at short yardage plays at all. Mm-hmm. And so – um. It, I, I got go back and forth. I'm like so mad because you stop the clock with a minute and 23 left, right? Okay. Right. But you run the ball and get stopped because you're not that great in short yard situations. Guess what's going to happen? The Bills are going to call timeout, and it's the same result. Yep. So in my mind, taking that shot there when everybody's thinking that you're going to run the ball, I got no problem with it. The problem I have is your quarterback throwing the ball five yards wide of a guy that's got two steps on his defender. Mm -hmm. Like, we can talk about Jared Goff and him being acceptable, and I've already said, like, I'm resigned to the fact that he's coming back next year. I just am kind of accepting it at this point, right? It's like, and that's the the first part of getting over something is having to accept it, right? Yeah, so, like, you know, I, I was in denial for a while, and now I'm kind of getting to that acceptance point. I don't – I this team, and I will continue to say this, and I will continue to believe it, this team, for all the building that they're doing with the young guys, even if, through losing, right, Tay, just like you just said, 
this team will never take the next step if Jared Goff is their quarterback. Mm. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever. hundred percent. He overthrew Khalif Raymond. He overthrew DeAndre Swift. He overthrew Josh Reynolds, or maybe not. He overthrew. He missed Shark by yep. six the safety. Yards. The safety and just can't make that not play. to mention there was another play that I still have not been able to go back and watch, even though I want to. They had Swift coming out of the backfield towards the goal line that got broken up by a linebacker that he mm-hmm. held on to the ball for like two seconds too long. This for as much as people want to prop him up and look at his stats and say. Jared Goff is that like he's acceptable. They can win with him. They cannot because he does not make the plays when you need to make the plays for a winning team. He throws the ball close to his receivers. He does not throw his ball to his receivers. And that's not going to get the job done. And he doesn't do a great job of accurately spreading it around him and Amon Ra seem to have a great connect, but everybody else he doesn't seem to be wavelength with, but I want to come back to something that we talked about last week and I disagreed with you on it. And I think it came to fruition this game. You said time of possession was the most overrated stat in football. Mm -hmm. Can you revisit that now after what just happened? Because we saw the lions with a three point lead with 10 minutes on the clock. They were the first, they, they ran six plays. Two completions, the first two plays were completion to Amaras St. Brown. The clock stops because he gets out of bounds on both of them, but he gets a first down. The next four plays, they pass, and the clock freezes because they incomplete every single time, which leaves the Bills nine minutes, which they iced seven to go get another touchdown to get the lead. Do you now see why time of possession is a little more important based on what we talked about last week? Again, I told you it was all based on situation. With 10 minutes, with 10 minutes left, you want to take the clock down. But if you are taking the clock down too much, you get into a conservative play call situation and you're playing not to lose at that point rather than playing to win. Well, Did the we... Lions needs to be doing – sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I mean, I mean... That, that, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I, I get where you're coming from and I'm with you, like <clears> – <throat> But I don't think that was the egregious time management situations in that game. If you want my opinion on what was the egregious time management situation in the game was the first half. Before halftime, when you left 53 seconds on the clock for the Bills to go down and get a, what, three-point field goal? Okay. okay. So, like, that mattered more so than I think that 10-minute possession did. And then, at the end of the game... The, the problem that I had with the Lions' last drive, specifically, was you you didn't know what was the identity of this drive. So what are we doing on this drive? Are we taking it down to get a field goal and tie the game and go to overtime? Or are we going to play to win this game? It's It's one of those situations where I hear you, and I think that you're right. Like, the fact that the Bills were able to possess the ball for that long in the fourth quarter and then come up with a touchdown was important. And it was obviously significant in the game. But at the same time, take the Michigan game in the fourth quarter, right? They're up by eight. Donovan Edwards goes off right tackle. He could have gone down so they could possess the ball longer. Or he could score, right? It's the same. You know what I'm saying? Like you go and get the points when you can go and get the points. No, but but and but see, this is where I wanted to lead because I think Tejas was kind of talking about it because we were able to calm down. To me, they did this off a of three up after a three game win streak, so I was able to calm down. Also, when they had the ball to close at like 23 seconds left, I, for one, I didn't even think they were going to run a play. I thought they was going to take the knee and go to OT. No. I didn't expect them, even with three with timeouts, three to try timeouts? to drive the way. No, I didn't think they were. With that little time, I didn't think they would be able to drive, especially off one play, which was a chunk 40-yarder to Stefan over the middle. But Kirby Joseph did a good job of at least being in the vicinity. My The only part where I disagree with you is I think if you at the very least ice off, let's say you ice off four or five minutes, and then they get the ball. You maybe score, maybe don't. You, at the very least, are putting yourself in a better position to defend a miracle like that from happening. You give Josh Allen in one of the best offenses nine minutes 
against your dead tired defense, that's a lot of time. And that I is, don't like. I feel like that's how it was. Again, wasn't with, there a roughing the passer yeah. call on that drive too? Yeah, that was the yes. Third. There was. They yep, extended their drive and got it them was. down towards the end zone. Yep. So like, I, I got one thing on, on the time management, real quick. Sorry, um, right, but right. Did, didn't we just kick Patricia out because? Every time in the fourth quarter, if we had a lead, we would go run, run, pass. And that's how we blew 17 points to Chicago. I think with this Lions offense, we don't have the dogs to, you know, we're just going to do whatever we want. You just got to call the best plays to try and score even at that point. Because that's, that's what killed us with Patricia. That's how we blew 17 points to the Bears in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah. So you still got to be... Isn't the isn't that running the football though? We when golf is winging it forty times, that's when you're at your worst. When you're pounding with Jamal Williams, getting bounced with Justin Jackson, big plays from DeAndre Swift. That's their identity offensively. I think at this point, it's not being a- aggressive or over creative. It's doing what you need to do to survive. You don't need to be cute and try to dominate games. Just play to your strengths and don't put put yourself in positions to hurt yourself. They keep doing that repeatedly by not running the football and taking time off the clock to keep your opposing offense on the sideline. No, I'm I'm with you on that. Like I I definitely think that there could have been, you know, some some fixes as far as the management aspect of things went. Um but at the end of the day, it's just execute. If you throw a good ball there, a field goal doesn't beat you. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I mean at the best. end of the day, yeah. that's what it comes down to is just pure execution of simple things. That's not a tough pass to complete. It's really not. But he wasn't anywhere close to it. He didn't give a and, chance. And I want to like, no, answer this question by Ricky because I think this is a legitimate question, right? Like, isn't Jared Goff young enough that he can grow into what you want, AJ, in your opinion? My question, my my thought on that is no. Nah, he's like 28. And my reasoning for that is everybody wants to say, oh, he's been to the Super Bowl. He's a Super Bowl appearing quarterback. You know why he's a Super Bowl appearing quarterback? Because of the defense they did, they had that year and because of a guy named Todd Gurley. Go look up his playoff statistics that year. They're not good. Mm-hmm. They're not good because he's not good. I've said for the, this entire season, I will continue to say it as long as he's in a Lions uniform and then I don't care when he's not. He is a bottom eight quarterback in the NFL. There are 24 other quarterbacks slinging the pigskin that I would rather have on this team. He's not going to get better because this is what he is. And the Rams signed him to that contract and then tried to get out of that contract as quickly as they could. Now, it worked out for us. I'm not mad that we made that trade. In the slightest bit, I'm not mad that we made that trade. It's netted us Great draft picks. It's netting us even better draft picks this season because of how bad the Rams are with them being plagued by the injury bug. But my problem will come is if, A, they don't try to restructure his deal for next year, which I don't think they'll be able to do, Mm -mm. or if they sign him to an extension. If they, the moment that they sign him to an extension, I'm done with Brad Holmes. Regardless of the good that he's done, because you took the most important position and you just held your team back. 